Hi, this is your host Abdul Bhartia. Today we have with us once again Hilary Carter, SVP of Research and Communications at the Linux Foundation. Hilary, it's great to have you back on the show. Thank you. Great to be here. It's my pleasure to host you here again today. And you folks, you know, as usual, your research team, uh, you folks come out with a lot of reports. And uh, recently, you folks uh, announced. So I will talk about that report, but I also want to hear from you. Uh, it's, it's March. What research report you folks are working on or the reports that came out in the recent months? Well, um, where, where do I begin? Let me start with what has already come out this year so far. Um, we published, we've published four reports uh, the, and we're not even through the first quarter of uh, 2024. Uh, so these reports are, um, are uh, the generative AI report, um, which um, came, um, w which provides insights on uh, the 2023 survey we did on generative AI. Uh, and we're super excited to uh, have published that report because it has so many amazing insights about the significance of openness in this um, uh, burgeoning technology domain. And uh, we're really enthusiastic for what it means for open source collaboration uh, and uh, all facets of um, generative AI and its impact across industries. So that was uh, uh, super exciting to uh, be able to publish. Uh, we published a report with our project community eBPF called the State of uh, eBPF, quite simply. And uh, that was a qualitative study that focuses on uh, the history and the uh, impact of uh, eBPF on application uh, development, uh, running uh, custom programs inside Linux and Windows, and um, how how the project has made execution faster. Uh, and it was great to work with um, uh, the many organizations uh, across uh, the eBPF ecosystem. So that was that was a, a great way to engage folks from that community. Uh, so check that report out. Uh, another report we published was on open source license compliance. Uh, this one was authored by Ibrahim Haddad, who leads our LFAI and Data Foundation. And it's a thought leadership piece on leveraging Ibrahim's many years of experience in open source and running an umbrella project community and working with enterprise uh, and having come from um, within enterprise, bringing that perspective. Ibrahim spent many years at uh, Samsung um, on how to best uh, manage uh, compliance issues uh, for open source projects um, and how to leverage the existing tools that are available uh, so that you have best practices in licensing um, and those tools being uh, using a software composition analysis tools um, using uh, uh, programs or tools like a software bill of materials. So it reads very much like an ode to uh, tooling and automation as um, one of the important uh, facets of open source license compliance. Um, other reports, uh, we've launched uh, new surveys, uh, but I think what we wanted to, uh, what we're also very excited about this year is the the publication of uh, a report called Maintainer Perspectives on Open Source Software Security. When we look at this maintainer's perspective in open source software report, uh, uh, what was the idea behind the report? Is it the first time you folks are doing it? Or is it like you do at a regular basis? If it is the first time, what led to that? If it is a regular report, we'll also talk about the comparison with the previous report versus this report. So let's go deeper into this report. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. So maintainer perspectives on open source software security is um, a report that was derived from a study that we a survey that we ran uh, in uh, the middle of 2022 in partnership with the Open Source Security Foundation, the OpenSSF, as well as uh, Sneak, as it happens, an SCA vendor uh, company. And uh, we ran a survey uh, that was really focusing on um, addressing cybersecurity challenges in open source software. And we published an initial report on the survey findings um, entitled just that, Addressing Cybersecurity Challenges in Open Source Software. It was published 
at uh, Open Source Summit uh, in Austin in June of 2022. And um, it told an important story, but it didn't tell the full story. And because of time constraints, resource constraints, we decided to focus on um, uh, only one part of the data. This report that we published uh, this year in 2024 is a different cut of that survey data um, where we had uh, uh, responses from um, maintainers and contributors. We had 159 respondents out of about 400 overall open source contributors who identified as maintainers and contributors. And from that group, um, there were 79 maintainers and core contributors who um, answered questions specific to how they address security. And having that insight really um, aligns with the work that we have done at the Linux Foundation over the course of many years. And I'll go back to the beginning of our work in this space because the findings from this report that we just recently published reflect the evolution of um, the mindset of our developer and contributor community as it relates to security and building secure software by default. Um, one of the first studies that we did probing into this issue of the maintainer and developer mindset was the FOSS contributor study. Uh, which was published in the at the end of 2020. It was a collaboration with uh, Harvard's Laboratory of Innovation Science and co-authored by Frank Nagel, uh, David Wheeler of the OpenSSF and others. And um, thousands of, of uh, developers all over the world were surveyed. And what that report revealed was that we had a long way to go um, as it relates to having developers think about software security um, by default, um, understanding developer motivations. What that report revealed was we had significant gaps. We had gaps in tooling. Uh, we had gaps in resourcing. We had gaps in motivation by developers. In fact, some were quoted as having reflected um, the view that working on fixing bugs um, was akin to a kind of soul destroying exercise. That's not verbatim, but that is the essence of uh, some of the commentary that came through the study, that it was seen to be a real chore. So that was four years ago. Uh, we have since done numerous studies. Uh, we we um, did a follow-up report with Harvard census two on um, uh, application libraries, free and open source software um, application libraries, scanning uh, the data sets contributed by SCA vendor companies to identify the most prolific software application packages in use. Um, by doing so, we could then identify which were the most widely used, um, then do further research to determine who maintains them and ask them what they needed. And so what we found in this research that um, was published recently, maintainer perspectives on open source software security is that there has been this evolution in, in terms of awareness, efficacy, uh, motivation to secure software. Um, one of the most exciting findings from this report was that uh, the perception that by the end of 2022, um, our respondents, 62% of the respondents believed that um, maintainers and core contributors uh, software would be more secure. And when they were asked what their view was uh, for software security by the end of 2023, 10%, there was a 10% bump, believing that over time, as we implement uh, more tooling, as we implement best practices, as we recalibrate our resources, um, that the trend uh, to creating secure software is um, materializing. Like it's not just a wish and it, it's more than a chore. It's becoming 
um, more real and easier to manifest. So that is one of the most exciting findings that this report reveals. And that's a long way to say we've come a long way, but we've come a long way. I was listening to you when you're talking about some of the, the you know, uh, like gap, gaps in tools and a lot of things. Um, can you also talk about some of the, like when they look at these reports, when they look at this finding, it also gives us a kind of perspective or that's the name also, insight into some of the pain points that developers and maintainers face. Uh, can you also talk about some Linux Foundation initiatives they actually help the community uh, so that, you know, whatever we are learning from these reports, we're actually turning them into actions as well. The fact that we have um, more well-defined best practices, uh, and I attribute that to the work of the Open uh, Source Security Foundation, uh, the work that they are doing to, cre- to uh, support um, secure open source software development and to uh, help um, software um, be securely developed, securely maintained, uh, and securely consumed uh, by fostering collaboration, defining best practices, uh, and developing solutions such as um, scorecards or uh, the best back, uh, best practices badging program. Um, you know, these tools are resources that um, are becoming better known. And uh, we have a dedicated project community that's funded and that is um, uh, pursuing every avenue to build uh, awareness and create pathways to collaboration, bring in more organizations uh, to help their efforts. And they're uh, making great strides. So we're excited about the trajectory of the open SSF broadly and the best practices and tools that they're developing um, under under that um, organization. And so uh, combined, uh, the open SSF combined with other um, communities at the Linux Foundation, other projects at the Linux Foundation, examples being our training and certification um, uh, program. We have half a dozen free training courses in secure software development, uh, starting with uh, um, developing secure software is the title of the course, LFD 121. It's like secure software development 101. Um, We have express learning courses that are um, short 60 to 90 90 minute um, um, bite-size snackable security training as well as paid certifications. We have event tracks at open source summits or dedicated events, uh, such as the upcoming Cloud Native Security Conference in June, um, that is rallying the community across different project domains um, and within industries. Uh, Finos's work in the Common Cloud Controls um, uh, initiative. There is so much going on. Um, we continue to do new security research. We're launching a new survey on uh, cybersecurity education. So uh, w- one thing that we will be putting together is a, a, a home where uh, people can come to learn about all of these different initiatives across the Linux Foundation. What are the projects? Um, and then what are the, the functional business units like training and, and events and uh, research that support um, the the effort to secure software broadly. You folks also host a lot of events. Like next week, we are going to KubeCon. Then it will be open source. I mean, a ton of event. How do you also kind of support uh, these maintainers, developers? Uh, you know, through events, through funding, through mentorship. One of the um, research reports that we're doing, which which carries on the theme of how we're supporting maintainer and developer communities is a study about developer relations. Uh, We will be launching a survey um, this year uh, in the first half of the year, might not make the end of the first quarter, but certainly in the, it will be fielded in the second quarter um, on having a better understanding of which of these programs are valuable to developers, um, what is their, uh, um, along their journey uh, of being an open source software developer, what are the resources that they find most valuable? Um, what are the types of programs that they find uh, really important? 
What's the value of in-person events, for example, to bring open source software developers together to solve challenges? So we were constantly learning about what our community needs. And that's why I'm excited about research because we're the mechanism uh, to ask these questions and engage this critical uh, stakeholder community to help us help them and give them the resources that they need, the tools, the time, the automation, the support, the events, um, and, and the data. Last time when we were at uh, Open Source Summit, you and I talked a lot about uh, sustainability. Can you talk a bit about what's new? Just give us an update on uh, the, the work that is going on in this space. Yeah, great question. Uh, sustainability is a topic near and dear uh, to me. Um, we're excited that in July on the 9th and 10th, um, the Linux Foundation will be supporting a UN hosted event called OSPOs for Good. And we'll be continuing uh, the conversation around how open source um, technologies are essentially uh, foundational digital public goods that will accelerate the sustainable development goals that will um, create impact in climate, imp impact in uh, reducing poverty and creating financial inclusion um, can be valuable to uh, good health and well-being. And um, so we'll be participating in that event and we'll hope to announce more. Uh, we also want to do more research in this area. We have launched uh, a new project, Project Tazama, which is an anti-fraud uh, collaboration, um, um, a technology donated, contributed, excuse me, to us from the Gates Foundation. And um, it will uh, accelerate financial inclusion because uh, by scanning uh, payments, um, particularly in uh, developing countries, um, we can better protect people from fraud and bring more people into the financial system uh, securely, even if it's not the traditional financial system, but it does uh, play a role uh, for um, banks as well. So financial inclusion is a really important topic. We'd like to do more research in this area. Uh, we'd like to explore sustainable cities. Uh, municipalities are responsible for generating an enormous amount of carbon. And uh, that's uh, one of the topic areas we are um, in the cradle stages of exploring now. But uh, you can count on us to do more uh, research in this area. And uh, certainly we'll be having a new project uh, announcements that relate to all facets of advancing sustainable development goals. Hillary, thank you so much for taking time out today and you walk us through these uh, reports, the research work that your team is doing. Thanks for great insights. And as usual, I love to chat with you again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Swap.